Uh, Jasmine in Pennsylvania, how are you? Pretty good, you? I'm good. Not bad. Hi, Jen. Um, so um, I'm actually really excited. This is like my first time calling in. Um, I probably watched you guys for a couple years, and um, I know you guys were like really instrumental in me, like kind of tra transitioning from like agnostic to atheist. So I'm like, I'm really excited to call. Oh well, <laughs> nice to hear from you. We're excited you called. <laughs> Um, so I'm calling because, um, lately I've kind of had an issue, uh, with, I'd say, um, my intermediate family just with, um, cause I've been, um, I've kind of accepted the fact that I was an atheist probably about a year and a half ago, but, um, lately I've been kind of more, um, open about it. Like I haven't tried to hide it from anyone, mm -hmm, okay. uh, which for a while I have. Um, and so I've kind of gotten into a few arguments with, uh, mainly my mother mm. about, um, yeah, cause she, well, it's really confusing because she doesn't believe in atheists because, um, there's like this verse in the Bible, it's like every tongue shall confess or whatever, yeah. um, about like whenever we die and we see God and everything. And she's like, well, there aren't no, there aren't any atheists, but she's also very adamant about converting me anyway. Okay. Um, and her logic behind this is that she wants me to be with her immediately instead of having to wait until, like, the rapture or anything. It's really weird. Yeah. Um, and so um, there have been times where, um, like, I remember, I believe it was for, like, the Pulse shooting where um, on my Facebook page I was just really upset and kind of mad at a lot of Christians who are um, – pretending to be upset, or even they might have been upset, but, you know, they're still subscribing to a religion that would um, kind of allow that to happen. And um, I think one of my family members was friends with me, and she called me about it saying, hey, if you want to keep that to yourself, that's fine, but then also, like, ask me to read Bible verses. <laughs> yeah. And so, I don't know, like, I don't want to argue with her because she is my mother, and I love her very much, um, and I don't want to hurt her feelings. But at the same time, it is really frustrating um, where she'll kind of discount my experiences. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. So this is stuff you've posted on your own personal Facebook page? Yes. Okay. So um, I guess a couple things I'd remind people that what you post on your Facebook page is up to you and that you're not mm -hmm. obligated to adhere to their standards because I'm sure they're posting pro-Christian things on their pages and expecting mm -hmm. you to be okay with that. Yeah, um, uh, very often. So, you know, basically set some ground rules that what you post on your Facebook page is up to you. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing is, if I mean, if you want to keep the peace in the family, um, you might want to set up a restricted list on your Facebook page so that they don't see certain posts. Mm -hmm. um, so that, there's a way to exclude people from seeing certain posts if you want to. Um, that's, yeah. that's if you choose to go down that path. If, if not, then you can agree to them, agree with them that you won't post anything challenging their religious beliefs on their Facebook pages, but you expect the same courtesy on your page. That yeah. you know, they're not welcome to, to basically try to force you to adhere to their rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you're certainly not the first person I've ever talked to who had uh, these, these complicated situations where they're trying to argue with, their, with uh, your, their parents. And arguing with your parents is a doubly complicated situation because while it feels like you're just dealing with the typical problems of arguing for atheism among people who you're in a society where 80 to 85 percent of people actively believe in God. So you're the minority and you mm -hmm. have to make these these anti-social arguments in a way. But also the problem I see most commonly with people who are getting in arguments with their parents is one of respecting boundaries where yeah. 
Yes. Your parents, being the ones who raised you, feel entitled to basically tell you what to say. And so this isn't just a situation of, are my arguments better than theirs? It's they're trying to exert some kind of power and authority over me that they used to have, but they don't anymore. Right. So exactly. I think when it comes to family members like this, it's really important to clearly lay out what your boundaries are and let your parents or whoever you might be arguing with know, hey, look, mm -hmm. I have a close relationship with you, but I'm not comfortable with you posting on a particular topic on my wall. If it bothers you to see this stuff, then please don't follow me or resist the urge to comment on things when you see it. But if you don't mm -hmm. do that, then I'm going to have to unfriend or block you, and I don't want to have to do that. Which is a difficult thing to say to your parents. Um, well, it's not even just the Facebook pages. It's like um, like in person with my mom, mm -hmm. it can get very difficult. Because um, I do a lot of volunteer work. Mm -hmm. And um, one morning I had to wake up really early, and I saw her early in the morning, and I you know, told her I was going to go volunteer. And she made this comment, um, just like, oh, I'm so proud of you, just like a little Christian warrior I know you really are. And yeah, um, <laughs> right. Um, that's no, a, it really that, bothered me. Just, well, it, it, <laughs> it, yeah, it, and it should bother you. That's a very passive aggressive kind of thing to say to someone. Yeah, I, I mean, they're not um, just they're not just sh your mom is not just disrespecting you by having these conversations that you may not have asked for, but she's also belittling and dismissing your opinion by saying right. there's no such you know. I'm an atheist. Oh, there's no such thing as an atheist. Right. Like, yeah. that is not just disagreeing with you. That is basically calling you a liar about your own beliefs. Yeah. Uh, and that yeah. is... Which, which they've had a couple of times. Um, mm -hmm. They have said that I'm just trying to be um, controversial or just... Oh, uh, yes. Something yeah. along those lines. And You're just <laughs> rebelling. I... Right. Yeah. 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 So I mean, yep. you need to I let mean, your mom really know. Funny. I don't know. <laughs> you just need to let your mom know it's not about you. Yeah. And my, yeah. If I'm rebelling, it's not against you. It's got nothing to do with you. And uh, if we can't have conversations where you are respectful and appropriate with me then the result is we're going to have less of a relationship than we already than we currently do exactly you know i had i had a lot of these kinds of conversations um with my parents for a while and mm -hmm. at some point um and my father was very religious he's very active in church he was like a lay minister and and everything um and finally, he reached a point where he just didn't talk to me about it anymore. Um, and I think he came to the conclusion that he valued our relationship more than he valued, you know, promoting his religious beliefs to me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, you know, I've always respected that position because I felt exactly the same way. You know, I wasn't running around, you know, trying to deconvert him or anything. Um, and I expected, you know, the same level of respect from him. Um, you know, I, I think uh, I had some other relatives who kind of crossed the line a few times. We had some very contentious discussions. And at some point they decided, you know what, we can keep having these discussions or we can, you know, kind of go to our separate corners and not talk about this subject. And so, mm -hmm. you know, if I go to a family gathering and they want to pray, I will sit quietly while they pray. I don't engage in it. I don't participate, but I'm not going to disrupt it. I'm not going to make a big show of, you know, getting up and walking out of the room because, you know, if they're going to close their eyes and pretend for a few seconds, oh, I, I don't care, you know. Um, yeah. You know, and they yeah. don't they don't try to convert me anymore. So yeah. it, it may take a while and you may get to the point where this happens with you and your parents. Um, and until then, mm -hmm. you may have to have some really uncomfortable conversations. But at some point... You know, you're not wrong if you set some boundaries for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Because I try to be very careful about being respectful. Like, I don't try to yeah. deconvert them. Like, even though, yeah. I mean, there is they, a part of me that would prefer if they weren't, but it's not 
anything that I would put in front of our relationship. Like, I'm fine with what you believe. That's fine right. with me. I can respect that. Yeah. But it's just when that isn't reciprocated, you know, that, that can get annoying. Yeah, <laughs> yep. and also do bear in mind, it sounds like they're totally not being respectful to you. So this is a very one-way thing. Yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's fair to clearly state that you have the same expectation of them that they should reasonably have of you, which is to be respectful and appropriate and uh, have a conversation that you are comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I would ask, like, how you guys would say it so that it's still respectful but um, very direct in its purpose, just, like, making sure, like, hey, I know you care about me, and I know this is how you're showing that you care about me, but, you know. Well, I wouldn't even phrase it that way, because that passive-aggressive stuff is not a demonstration of, <laughs> yeah, of yeah. care and concern. Okay? Right. Um, but yeah. that is a very diplomatic way to put it, so yeah. maybe it's okay to say that stuff, even yeah. if you're being a little insincere or, about it. Or just, you know, hey, this is obviously um, something that we're, we're not going to agree on, and I don't want this to mm -hmm. come between us. So why don't we not talk about this topic mm -hmm. you know, and just leave this one alone? Um, and, you know, I won't, I won't try to deconvert you if you don't try to convert me. And, you know, that way we can preserve our relationship and emphasize that you do value the relationship with them. Yeah, and if you're going to try to make basically what, let's be honest, are veiled threats that if you don't respect the way I want to be communicated with, then we're not going to talk anymore. You should think mm -hmm. first about whether you are prepared to back up those threats. Yeah. And you should be. And, and bear in mind that if you break off communication with your parents for a while, that doesn't mean that the relationship is over forever. It just means you are going to have to resort to temporarily extreme measures until they start being more respectful toward you. Oh, well, thank you, guys. You definitely made me feel a lot better about that. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, good luck with thank that. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.